you know, we had marvelous blessings in the midst of so much trial and tribulation. We really see, you know, uh, things really began to get a little out of hand here. Well, they've been out of hand for a long time. But, you know, saints, we have to keep our heads up. We have to stay focused on God. You know, you can't be looking here, there, and everywhere. You got to realize that truly deep down in our hearts, you got to know that God's got all the answers. Amen. All the answers. He is the answer man. Can I get a witness on the line today? Somebody. Amen. Amen. Right, here we go. We hear some people on here. I thought it was quiet for a minute. Y'all scared me. <laughs> Glory to God. But saints, you know, this morning, um, our teacher is going to be Pastor Hart, and he wants to talk about Satan. You know, he's going to talk about Lucifer. We're going to talk about the glistening one. And um, we need to really pay attention because, you know, he's real busy right now. Amen. And uh, I believe there's some things that are going to pull the covers off of him today. So let everybody come together. First thing this morning, let's give God a hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Let's start out right. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, everybody. Everybody. Let's give him some glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. There we go. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to God in prayer. And hopefully by that time, Pastor Hart will be online with us. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just totally thank you. I mean, totally. With everything we are, ever will ever be, with all that's within us, we thank you. For God, you know you've been greater to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord, you see us in all of our situations, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but in all of it, you're God all the time. And if we had 10,000 tongues, <clears throat> we couldn't thank you enough for all your wonderful benefits, really, truly, in our life. You know, God, you're keeping us from COVID-19. You know, God, it's like a fog that's just coming over the earth that's touching so many people. People are passing away left and right. But in the midst of all of that, Hallelujah. you're Hallelujah. still keeping us safe and secure in your arms, God. Yes, you know how wonderful it is to be saved and know that no matter which way things go, our life and times are in the master's hands. Yes. We're so thankful this morning, God. You woke us up this morning, started us on our way, giving us a mind to pray. The opportunity to speak out of our mouths because somebody couldn't talk this morning. Somebody couldn't yes. see this morning. Somebody might be dead, lying on the grave. But you yes. gave us another day, Lord, to be able to beseech your heavenly throne of undeserved kindness. And we're here to say thank you for all that you are thank and all that you, you do, you God. We just love you. Thank you. For you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You're everything that you say you are. What about that? Everything Hallelujah. you say you are, you are. That's exactly what you Amen. are. Amen. God, not one thing less will you ever be and God we thank you and praise you for the beauty of your holiness residing on this line giving us the opportunity to dial in yes, as we yes. see so many churches they're going back to 10 five people at five people at a time and yes. 10 yes. people at a time God yes. I am so glad that you just led us to stay online, stay in the spirit, stay on word, not have us here today, in the church today, out the church tomorrow, 25 people today, 10 people next day, 5 people the next week. No, you can't meet together this week. We're not going to be caught up in chaos. Because we listen to God. Thank you, Lord. God, open up. Everything will be opened up. We don't have to worry about it no more. But until then, we're not going to be a part of the chaos. Amen. You know, people saying, oh, is Pastor listening to God? Because he said that we could open up, we have 50 people. Now, is Pastor listening to God? We got 25 people. Is Pastor open up to God? We, we listen to God. We can't come this week, but we can come next week. You can have five people this week. Ten people. Yes. I'm listening to God. Yes, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God ain't gonna have us in the day, out tomorrow, Amen. there the door tomorrow, back next Amen. week, twenty five this week. We gotta Amen. decide whether it be tw who twenty Amen. people that's gonna be. Is it? That's Amen. not the author of confusion, y'all. Amen. That's why this is smooth Amen. sailing. That's as smooth Amen. as can be. That's as smooth Amen. as can be. Amen. 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 You can push. You can push, you can push your spiritual button on calm because you're Amen. in the right place. <laughs> yeah. God's going to do everything that needs to be done right here. 
Amen. So when he gets said he's doing everything to be done right here, he's going to put us on the going to put us back in the church, and everything's going to be done right there. Amen. 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 God don't have us everywhere like that. No, Amen. he don't. Amen. So, God, I thank you and I praise you for this great opportunity today. I thank you for this teaching on Lucifer, on Satan. And thank then I thank you for our sermon that starts at 1130 on to be or not to be. From Romans chapter Hallelujah. 12, verse 9 to 21. Believe me, you don't want to miss to be or not to be. Thank so, you. saints, with any further ado, we all come together and we say amen. 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 Pastor Hardy, you on the line, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Hardy, are you here? Thank you, Jesus. All right, he may have some trouble getting on this morning, so y'all just be in prayer. Amen. Amen. And I'll be right back. I reckon I got to go get him. You hear me say rare, I reckon, didn't you? Y'all don't know Amen. 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 I reckon. Come on, I'm about that yeah. up there in New York. I, I reckon. We see our record down here. Yeah. You want to live, Pastor Hardy? Yes, yes, yes. Anybody hear me? Hey, what oh, you doing you over there, man? Hey, hey, we calling you, man. Thank you, Jesus. We're waiting on you, man. Come on thank with you, it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can everybody hear me? Amen. Yeah, Amen. We can hear you, man. Amen. Come on. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Praise God. And uh, I had some trouble with my telephone, and I'm on a new telephone, so so let's move. <laughs> uh, let us pray again, and I thank God for everybody that's on the line. And, and uh, I know in my heart that everybody's on the line is important. Amen. Everybody. Amen. I used to say all the time in the building, even, even the bench warmers is it, important. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray one more time to, to talk to God, and I thank I thank God for Pastor all, always. Thank God for His prayers this morning, and thank God for everybody taking out time time this morning to serve God. If we are ever in a time, it's still time to serve God. Amen. Let us pray, Father, Father, in Jesus' name. We all are before you this morning in our own individual places, but we are still one in the Spirit of God. Yes. Father God, I yes. thank you this morning for the Holy Spirit that's on the line this morning. Oh, I thank you. As, as, as always, I, 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 I rely on him because I, I am nothing nothing but, but dust and ashes, but, but I praise God uh, from, from whom all blessings flow. I, I praise him this morning just for being God. I praise him this morning that nothing takes him by surprise. I praise God this morning for this moment, a moment in, in, in an hour to serve God as, as he is. And I praise God this morning, wonderful for everybody that, that is on the line again. I thank God. I, I'm, I'm a little bit excited. As always, when to when serve God, there's a time to be excited. It, 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 it's yeah. a time to, to move as, as God gives us the opportunity. Amen. I praise God this morning, and I thank Him. Everybody say amen. 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 I, I know that this, we uh, heard something about Satan the last couple of weeks, and and and, and I have not forgotten. Uh, I know that the last minister to talk, he, 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 he talked about Satan from, from, uh, uh, um, Ephesians 6 chapter, as we had for the last week, and, and I know before then, Pastor talked talk from uh, uh, one, one uh, Tuesday, I mean, a couple of Tuesdays ago, um, uh, on, on Tuesday night. He talked about Satan also. Satan is very important in our time, and, and, uh, and, and he, 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 he still wants to show himself today as God. And... and um, we're going to talk this morning, morning for a minute or two. I mean, Genesis third chapter. Genesis third chapter. That begin the first verse. Give yeah, everybody a minute, minute to turn the Bible to Genesis first and the third chapter. Third chapter. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Third chapter. Genesis three. Three one. Everybody there? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Genesis 3rd chapter, verse 1. Amen. Amen. That's it. Okay. And it reads. And I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of time this morning because if I, if I run through it, and, and, and there's something in this very verse, I'm going to come back to in just a second. Now, Satan was more churning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, as God indeed said, you should not eat of every tree in the garden. Uh, let, let me. Let me back up um, by Satan asking that question. It's a word in here that when they first started reading, it says Satan was more cunning than any other beast of the field. And, 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 and I started looking at the word cunning, and I wonder why that he was more cunning than any beast that the Lord God had made in the God. And, and, and I have some writing about him that, that is very important to everybody that's on the line. What am I trying to say? We underestimate Satan. Satan is a prince. Uh, he he's the prince of the power of the air. He he's not a um, no everyday John like some of us suppose that he is. Satan is a prince. Come on now. Yes, Satan is. is a prince, and, and and the Bible says that he he's the prince of the powers of the air. What is, what is the scripture trying to tell us? Because Satan shows himself just like God. For him to not be everywhere at once, and, and we know the word of God said he goes to and forth in the earth. And by him going to and forth, he don't be everywhere at the same time, but but he always have a, have a privilege of showing up. Mm-hmm. And, and now that's why I, I learned in this life that that when God says my thoughts is not your thoughts, your way is not my way, it's exactly what, 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 what he's saying because of, of all of us, because from time to time I, I see people think that they're real smart within them, in themselves. Anytime you end up in flesh, you, you're giving Satan room. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to that word, Kearney. I looked up that word and, and, and I see what that word really means. I'm going to open that word up a minute. Kearney. He was more Kearney than any beast that the Lord God has made. Mm. And the word Kearney can mean crafty. He's very mm-hmm. smart and he's very crafty at what he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember, he's a prince. Mm-hmm. And he's Kearney and he's sly. Mm-hmm. He's ingenious. Mm-hmm. The only words are for more than a whole lot of us here, including me. Mm-hmm. He's skilled. He's deceitful. Mm-hmm. And he's invasion. Mm-hmm. That gives us a better understanding of what that word really means. Let's move on then. Let, let's always remember it is no way that we can get past him without God. Amen. That's why the scripture said that we have to have the mind of Christ and we have to be led by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. That moves us from ourselves, not to even rely on ourselves. Can anybody hear me? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Say, Lord, I can't, I I can't rely on my own saints. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. Amen. 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 The scripture says we are not our own. We are bought with the price when we're born again. Amen. 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 Why it's so amen. important for being born again? Because the scripture said, let me say it again. You are not your own. You have been bought with the price. Amen. That gives us that gives us room to, to not rely on what we think and what we desire. Amen. Let's check with God when we ain't going to thinking a whole lot. Amen. Even in my own thoughts, my my own thoughts in any last days and hours that we're living in, our mind is because of when I'm not thinking about junk, it still shows up. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Let's move to the first two. <laughs> and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat unless... Uh, 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 so uh, uh, a thought just came to mind when, when, when I read it. I'm going to read it again. And, and Satan's so sly, he, he knew the one to come to it first. He, he did not come to Adam first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He didn't come to the man first. He, the woman first. Amen. he, he came to the woman first. Emotional connection. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he said to say to the and the woman said to the, to the serpent, we may eat fruit of the of the tree of, of the garden. Verse three. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You should not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Mm-hmm. What is God? God has already told him about the tree, and, and, and God is good as he is, because it, it, it was so much in that, in that tree that, that God did not want us to know about. Death, mm-hmm. destruction, mm-hmm. sickness, mm-hmm. all that is in the part that God had told them, but they don't, don't eat from it, don't even touch it. Mm-hmm. Verse 4. I help them having somebody beside myself. Then the serpent yes. said unto the woman, you will not surely die. He, 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 he changed everything that God said around in, 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 in a moment of time. He, he, Satan has a way of deceiving even on, on, on the, because the, the most small of us, us, we're not above Satan. Not when it comes down to him. Amen. Then the serpent said unto the woman, you should not surely die. For God knows, God still knows. For God knows in, in, in the day you should eat. And make sure I'm reading that right. For God knows in, in the day, day you eat of eat of it, your eye will be open. Mm-hmm. Open to what? Wrong thing. Your eye will, will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. We know that God has told us from time to time. Nobody can be God but God. We we think we know the difference between good and evil. We feel that we do. And and, and always reading the word of God, I, I I always know that know that I don't know things as I think I know. Amen. 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 And and in 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 the uh, I've been here a little while in the earth. Now be careful what I think I know. Amen. We're sick. Mm-hmm. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was. Pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desired to make one wise. Then had already told her to make a wise. Mm-hmm. She took of, of the fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Verse 7. Both of them have done eight already. They disobeyed God already. Mm-hmm. The moment of time. Verse 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. Always were naked, and then they knew that, that they were naked. They were always naked. Mm-hmm. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves cover it. Mm-hmm. Verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, of the Lord God, among the trees of the God. Now that they have ate from the tree and notice now that they know they're naked. Mm-hmm. And let's read on down and I'll find out with verse 9 some more, more of what they know. They always were, and then they know a lot. After eight from the tree. <laughs> Verse nine. Do you know what God called call Adam and said to him, Where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Let's see what the Lord is going to tell him about him being naked. Verse 11. He was always naked, but he, he didn't he didn't know he was naked not for eight from the tree. Mm-hmm. Eyes didn't come open according to the scripture. The eyes came open. Mm-hmm. No one in places that they never did know about. Was always was, but they never did know not before the eight from the tree. Mm-hmm. And he said in, in verse eleven, and he said, Who told you that you were naked? Mm-hmm. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you? That you should not eat. Verse 12. And the man said, said, hey, flip another script. And the man said, 
the woman who you gave gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and and I ate. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me. He's great to see. He deceived me and, and, and I ate. So the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed from all, all cattle. He, 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 he brought him on down past the cattle. He cursed him down past the cattle. Mm-hmm. And more than every beast of the field, mm-hmm. on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. oh man, man, man. Mm-hmm. The Lord put him, put him, put him on his belly to crawl all the days of his life. Mm-hmm. Let's move on, on a little bit. I'll put and change. Change chapters. Knowing that the that, uh, in, in in what we just read, they always was, and, and and after they ate from the tree, how how low was it, it is about God that that tried to try to keep us from from going through through death and pain mm-hmm. and sorrow. We're gonna we're gonna turn our Bibles to to um Job one chapter one. It's hard to talk about Satan without uh, Job showing up in the picture. Mm-hmm. Job, Job chapter one. Job chapter one, and we're gonna start with verse one. Give everybody a few minutes to get that. Amen. The way Satan shows up, he, he and he shows up at times because I, I I had said that uh, that in my life. I was not going to pay much attention to him, and and and, and uh, we're not paying much attention to him. He he always set and trap the net. When we least expect it, expect it, he shows up. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, we're going to look at we're going to look at closely at Job, and and we're going to see how he showed up in Job's day, and um, what's saying always always said it, and uh, and what's saying now, now. Mm-hmm. Joe, I mean, Satan shows shows up in the presence of God when the sons of God came together. Oh, what do he care about showing up in our church when the sons of God come? He he, he, he can care less. Amen. He showed up then. He he just shows up now. Joe Warren, chapter one. We're gonna start at the first verse. You Not know, a lot of reading and a lot of work for to get these classes out, but but praise God. Amen. Job chapter one. And I'm gonna start reading at verse one. Now there was a man in, in the land of Oz, whose name was Job. That man was blameless. Listen to what the scripture says, and that man was blameless. Upright. One who feared God and shewing evil. This man feared God. He was blameless. How many of us are blameless? I know I'm not blameless. That's a whole lot saying, saying about any man that, that he, he he was blameless. And fear God. Both is in one man. A very important to point that out. Verse 2. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. It's going to tell us about his family line just for a minute. It's still important because it's in the scripture. Verse 3. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep. The, the, the man was not poor. 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels. 500 yokes of oxen. 500 female donkeys. And a very large household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people in the east. This man had a lot, and he he, he was one of the greatest men that was in the east. I, I wanted to say something about this. about because uh, that's why the, 
it, w- it was important to read this poet in. I want to say this on, on, on the poet that we just read, but about this man was the greatest man that was of the East. And, 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 the, and the script talked like this man was not poor, and, and this man had a lot. Mm-hmm. What I, I'm trying to get to, so that if you want to have in this life, you must have God in your life. And because of, 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 of concerning God, uh, um, because that's why scripture keeps telling us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that we have need of will be added to us. Amen. Amen. It didn't say get it, get it ungodly, and he said all these things. Because uh, let me read the last part of that scripture again. If they were, they were one of the greatest men in all the earth. Satan's going to speak up on, on, on some of all this inheritance in just a little bit. Verse 4. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would sin and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Verse 5. He was sending his sisters to eat with him. So it was when a day, day of feast, feasting had, had run their course that Job would sin and sanctify them. Let's look and see what Job had to do about his, his sons and his daughters. And he would raise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. The scripture is telling us right here, after they finished all this feasting, Job would make an offering concerning them. And, and he would talk to God concerning them. That took, took me to a different place. I, I am the man that God has, has, has appointed over my family. It's a very important. We see in the scripture, I mean, after they've done all this eating and drinking, Job took, took I, I mean, offerings to the God. To God, one by one, concerning them all. That's important for our time to know. That's hard. Let me jump in for a minute right here. Uh, what we need uh, to okay, understand okay. about Go this ahead. passage of scripture, Pastor, is that you have to realize something that one of the first books of the Bible was Job. Uh huh. Okay, and you got to realize something. The reason why Job is getting up doing this. See, after every son's every son's birthday, they had a celebration. You right, need uh-huh. to be mm-hmm. very paying attention, thanks to the numbers that are in this particular passage. You see that he mm-hmm. had uh, he had seven sons. That means mm-hmm. perfection. Mm-hmm. You see, he uh-huh. had three daughters: father, son, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You see that he mm-hmm. had five hundred yoke of oxen. Five symbolized grace. You see, he had yeah. five female donkeys that symbolized grace. Mm-hmm. They considered back in those days, the larger the family, it was a sign of God's blessing. And uh, the right, reason right. why they, they came, to, these were the celebrations. Each celebration was each one of his son's birthdays. Mm-hmm. Those were the seven celebrations that they had. And at these seven celebrations, the reason why Job would go through all of, uh, through, through, through this getting up, rising up early, uh, praying over them, because remember, they didn't have no priests in those days. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Uh-oh, mm-hmm. wait a minute, wait a minute, mm-hmm. Pastor, wait a minute. Right. They didn't have no priests back in this day. Amen. So Job was the priest of his home. Uh-huh. And the reason why he blessed them and prayed over them what he actually did is pray specifically for their purification. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I All just right. need to throw that in right there. So you have an understanding Amen. why yeah. Job was doing the work of a priest, because there was no priest in that day. Amen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Amen. And Job was the priest over his household. Amen. Yes. And the numbers of his family symbolize God's grace, follows the Trinity, grace, mercy, and God's specific special number of perfection, which is seven. Mm-hmm. I'm Amen. done. Go ahead. Amen. I just want Amen. to point that out. Amen. I always thank God. 
Thank God for the knowledge that be on the line. Thank God for the for to open up the scripture more that we all may understand. Amen. Thank you. And uh, um, the number of them all. For Job said, it may be, be that my sons have seen and cursed and cursed God in their hearts. That's why but Job did it regularly. Job did it regularly. Verse 6. That was the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Mm-hmm. Sons of God came came and Satan had came among them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, that second took took me for uh, I mean uh, in the pastor prayed from time to time and they say he 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 know that we are came together and Satan Satan's around here somewhere. Mm-hmm. Amen. Verse seven. And the Lord said to, to to Satan from from whether you come. So Satan answered the Lord and said. From going to and forth on the earth, from walking back and forth on it. Verse eight. Now, now, now verse seven says, "For from going, to, the Lord asked, asked Satan a question: What you doing here?" And 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 he said that from walking to and forth on the earth, walking back and forth on it. Verse eight. Then the Lord said to Satan, "Have you considered my servant Job?" Let's see what the Lord have to, have to say about Job. That there is none like him on on the earth. Now that's a lot for God to say about a man. The Lord said, there's none like him on the whole earth. He was a blameless and upright man. One who fears fears God and shuns evil. There was one that fears God and, 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 and does away with doing evil. How many of us? Us know that when God speaks speaks up about a man, it has to be a lot about the man to be saved. Verse nine. Amen. So Satan answered the Lord and said, "Does Job fear God for nothing?" Verse ten. Mm-hmm. Satan asked 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 ask the question. In verse nine. Do 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 our uh, Job fear God for nothing? Verse ten. Mm-hmm. Have you not made a hedge about him? Satan very small. He made a hedge about him around his his household and 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 all around that he has on every side. Have you dressed the works works of his hands and and his possessions have increased in in the land? Joe had a big big increase also because he served God. Verse, verse eleven. To, to get an increase, we should see in the verses that the increase, increase don't come from Satan. The increase comes from God. Amen. Yes. And, 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 and we want more of something. We must learn, learn to walk close to God. Walk Verse 11. God. Yes. That's why Satan is Satan. Because uh, 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 if we're looking at the scripture close enough, because Job had because he walked close to God. Because that, that, that's why God said it's none like it. And, and, and he was a brains, upright man, the one that feared God and chewing his evil. That's a whole lot said about a man. Mm-hmm. Verse 10. I'm going to read verse 10 again. Have you have you not made a hedge around him, and around his household, around all that he had on every side? You have blessed the works of his hand, and his possession have increased in the land. Verse 11. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he, he has, and he will surely crush you to your face. Yeah. Satan knows exactly, exactly what to say God. He, and, and he's telling God to take some of that back you don't gave Job. And I see what Job crush you to your face. Mm-hmm. Verse 12. Mm-hmm. Let's read verse 12. Then. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in, in your power. Mm. Only do not lay your hand on his person. It was poor to God, then we don't say to touch. was his person. It had to be his heart. So, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now he now Satan going going off from the presence of the Lord. See what else he did. Mm. To Job. Verse 13. Mm. 
No, that was a day when when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Drinking wine again. And the messenger came, came to Job and said that the oxen were plowing. The oxen were plowing and the drunkards were feeding beside them. And the Serbians, I had a little problem pronouncing that word, and my wife sort of helped me out with that word, Serbians. It's sort of, so I had to mean angels, what I, what I could come up with. Ra- raided them and took them away. Indeed, they were, indeed, they have killed the serpents with the edge of the sword, and, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Verse 16. Now Satan is going to work with you. Amen. Verse 16. He was still speaking. Another also came and said, The, the, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the serpents and consumed them. And, and consumed them. And alone I have escaped to tell you. My God. The price on serving God. Verse 17. He was still speaking. Another also came and said, The Serbians formed form three bands, raided the camels, and took, took, and took them away. Yes, yes, and killed the serpent with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. Verse 18. While he was still speaking. Before one gets finished speaking, let him speak. Another came also and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. Verse 19. And suddenly a great wind came, came, came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. Mm-hmm. And it fell on the young people. And they, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose tore his robe and shaved his head and, and fell to the ground and worshiped and said. Let's see what Job had to say. My God. Nick, naked have I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. All, and in all this, Job did not sin, nor curse God with wrong. After all this, taking and taking his sons and his daughters, he did not curse, curse God, or call God anything wrong. Amen. Uh, Amen. That's, uh, that's a whole lot to be taken. Yeah. Uh, and we just read before one stop, 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 stop telling Job all that he knew, or nothing was waiting with the story. Let's read on a little further in verse in verse two to, to get a little bit better understanding. Again, that was the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Satan Satan has to present himself before the Lord. Verse 2. And the Lord said to Satan, "From, from, from, from where do you come? So Satan answered and said to the Lord, from going to and forth on the earth and from walking back. And forth on it. Mm-hmm. Verse three. Then the Lord said to Satan, "Have you considered my serpent Job? That there is none like him on on the earth, a blameless and an upright man who fears God and shuns evil. And still he he holds fast to his, his integrity. Yeah. Although you you." And created me against him to destroy him without cause. Now the, the, the Lord is talking to Satan. Uh, uh, he wanted him to destroy, destroy Job without a cause. Mm-hmm. Satan knows exactly how to, how to, to do conversation. That's why he's mm-hmm. very kerning. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and in our day, let, let's be smart. Uh, let's don't listen to him and try to out, mm-hmm. outsmart him because he's not smart. I'm, I'm 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 talking to you and the weather myself. Amen. Let's let's stay with God to hear God's voice. We are not smarter than we think we are. Let's read on to verse four. 
So Satan answered the Lord and said, scheme for scheme. Let's see what else this boy had to say to the Lord. Yes, yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. Mm-hmm. Well, knows how to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Verse five. But, but stretch out your hand now and touch, and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will surely crush you to your face. Verse 6, and the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hands, but spare his life. Praise God. He, he, the, the Lord then gave Job to Satan, but he, but he told him, he told him, but spare his life. Verse 7, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. What a price. Verse 8. For, uh, for he took himself, for he took, took for himself a pot shed with which to, to scab himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Verse 9. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Verse 10. But he said to her, but you speak. One of the foolish woman speaks. Yes. So indeed, accept good, good from God. And shall, shall we not accept adversity? No. And all Joe did not sin with his lips. Verse 10 tell us after, after all the whole story, after sons got taken, after he got struck with boil from his head to the to the crown of crown crown of his foot, he, he still not he still not cursed God. As on down in this in the chapter, instead of Job cursing God, he cursed the day that he was born. Let's see, I have a few more minutes. I'm gonna let's turn our Bibles quickly to Revelation 12, 7 to 10. Still work our hands a little bit. Revelation 12, verse 7. I might have said that wrong. It, 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 it's really Revelation 12. Revelation 12, starting with the first verse. Uh, I mean, not the first verse. Um, Revelation 12, starting with the seventh verse. I get it right in a minute. Revelation 12, 7. The description is important that I read it in. I have a few more minutes, um, and then, then I'm going to turn the service over. Revelation 12, with the seventh verse. Is it very important to read in? Revelation 12, 7. And war broke out in heaven. Micah and, Micah and his angels. Wait a minute. Let me, let me read this right. And war broke out, broke out in heaven. Micah and his angels fought, fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Verse 8. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place, no was a place found for them in heaven in it alone. Verse nine. Micah doing some casting out here. Oh. Verse nine. So the dragon was cast out. That serpent, that serpent of old, the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angel was cast out with him. I remember Job said, uh, it's in the book of Job, woe un- uh, unto the inhabitants of the other earth, for Satan has come down among you. Verse 10. Then I heard a, heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and, and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren 
who accused them before God, before our God, they and might, has been cast out. Now Satan has been cast out of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to read, read uh, one more verse. Uh, I, I mean, one, I mean, two more yeah. verses in Revelation 20. Revelation 20 and 1. It's going to wrap, wrap up the service for this morning. Revelation 20, 20 and 1 to 10. I'm going to read that. Revelation 20 and 1 to 10. Revelation 20 and 1, it, it reads, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottom of his pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, who was the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottom of his pit, and shut him up, set a seal on him, so that he should uh, deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years were finished. And after those these things, he must be released for a little while. Verse 4. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and uh, they that sat on, on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw saw the souls of, of those who had been beheaded for, for, for their witness to Jesus. And for the word of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Who had not worshipped the Lord. Who had not worshipped the beast. Or his image. And had not received his mark on their foreheads. And on, on their hands. <laughs> and they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Whether the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who, who has poured in the first resurrection. Over such the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with them a thousand years. Verse 7. Now when a thousand years have expired, Satan will be loosed from prison. I praise God for that. And, and uh, that's the end of our, of, uh, of the Sunday school for this morning. And, and I would like to pray with everybody for a minute. Then I'm going to turn it back over to the to pastor. And I'll see what everybody had to say about what they have heard. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you again for your presence and your power. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit open our understanding according to what we have read. Lord God, I thank you for a moment in time that you have presented before all of us the word on this day. For well, I heard the scripture said, this is another day the Lord has made. We all shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Father, I thank you for the heroes. And and I, I pray that we will practice out to what, what we are hearing. As the Lord God always say, prove him. And see, won't he do what he say? Amen. I thank you for knowing today that there's nothing too hard for you. Lord God, I thank you for your hand that's on my life. Father, I pray that somebody is listening on this service today that, that will surrender the, their life to Christ. For, for Jesus told Nicodemus, a man must be born again. He must be born of the water and of the spirit. So he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Father God, I praise you and I thank you. Even now. Everybody say amen. 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 Yeah. We have 10 minutes, and I'm going to let Pastor have something to say concerning what he heard. Okay, I see the time, so let me jump in here right quick. I, I just want to uh, take this little bit of time that's left before I turn it over to our dear minister, Ted, uh, Philadelphia Church. Um, I want to talk about something that's very significant that um, about this passage of the scripture over here in uh, Genesis chapter 3. If you don't mind, I just want to kind of focus on verses 4 to 7 right quick. I just want Amen. to fortify this in your spirit so you can actually see where the lost man is today. Where the lost man, I didn't say the saved man, 
I mm-hmm. said, the men right. that are lost today, let me show you where they're at. First of all, they're where they're at, apart from God. It mirrors the situation with Adam and Eve after the fall. Mm-hmm. Now, let me Amen. make sense to you here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See, before Adam and Eve had sinned, Deacon Mike, they were enjoying three special privileges. Three special privileges, Manny. Three special privileges that they enjoyed. This is before Adam and Eve said. Number one, they were in communion with God. Do you remember that? Do you remember mm-hmm. that? They were in communion with God. That they enjoyed that privilege. You understand? They, 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 they walked and talked with him. This is before the fall. That was Amen. a privilege that they had. Here's another privilege that they had. Remember I said before the fall. Mm-hmm. They knew God as he is. That was a privilege. Amen. They didn't have to wonder about who God was. They knew God as he was. Their minds were not clouded by falsehood or half-truths that Satan mm-hmm. put in their mind. They, you, you see what I'm saying here? These are the privileges that they had. They had the privilege of communion with God. The other privilege that they had is they knew God as he was. And mm-hmm. here's the third privilege they had before Satan came and clouded their mind. Amen. They knew they possessed spiritual life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Amen. They were alive, not just physically, but in mm-hmm. every sense of the word. Their souls mm-hmm. were alive with God. Yes. This is before Satan ever showed up. Those are three yeah. privileges that they yeah. shared every day, every second, every hour. Amen. Now, I want to show you the effects of sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command and fell into their rebellion, they lost all three of those privileges with God. Let me prove it to you. Mm-hmm. Let me prove what it say now. Number one. All right. Their intimate communion was broken. Adam and Eve hid from God. See, before they fall, they remember they never hid. Oh, I wish I had somebody that's listening to this part. They okay, never right, hid. Right, they right. never hid. Did you see them? I mean, that's, that's how okay. they never hide. They never right. had to hide from God. No, they didn't. But when they, yeah. when they disobeyed, they hid from that intimate they communion they had uh-huh. with God mm-hmm. was broken. Yeah, yeah. From God. Here, I'm telling you, they lost all three of these brothers. Here's the next one. Uh-huh. When they believe Satan's lie, and just like you, if you stop believing his lies, uh-huh. their knowledge will be corrupted. Yes, That's what's going on with the world today. Their knowledge is just corrupted. That's right. Uh-huh. And their understanding of God is really damaged. It's damaged. Amen. Mm-hmm. If they understand what damage with God, they wouldn't would be able to do the things that they do to each other yes. and to others and to mm-hmm. themselves. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Amen. And what God Amen. said to them, Sister Gail, became twisted in their mind. That's right. See, them, their minds was oh, come on here, Linda. Come on. Amen. Their minds Amen. wasn't Amen. twisted before it is, before Talk it about it to them. Amen. 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 And then the third point, and this is probably the, the, the most important, instead of knowing life as they once had known it with God, they began to know death. They never knew that. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. They never knew, they never knew, they never knew that before. They had to listen. He said, listen, you can just laugh and joke and enjoy life and, 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 and but they didn't even know they was naked. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and they, they were butt, they were butt naked. Didn't know they were naked. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even know they were naked. Amen. Yes. And the reason Amen. why they didn't know they were naked, because I told you they didn't know nothing about death. They didn't know nothing about sin. It wasn't no such thing as shame. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Oh Lord, you know I ain't Amen. fooling with y'all. Today. I got ten minutes. Amen. I gotta get out of here. Amen. Amen. Our present condition, apart from God, 
Uh -huh. Our present conditions mirror what Adam and Eve knew after the fall. The uh -huh. present condition, apart from God, our present condition mirrors what Adam and Eve knew after the fall. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Listen, we knew we were alienated from God. Come on now. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 We know we was alienated from God. We had to confess our sins, believe in our hearts, and God raised Jesus from the dead. We know we were aliens from God. Come on now, Minister Amen. Amen. We were aliens. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And we were ignorant of the truth of God. Amen. Amen. We were ignorant. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. And the third thing, we were condemned to a physical and spiritual death. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. Because, see, before they fell, was no such thing as death. Was no such thing as death. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. Amen. See, you got to realize something. Paradise lost is paradise gained with Jesus. See, Amen. everything Amen. that they lost Amen. in the garden, because they lost, we lost. Uh-uh. That's amen. Right. Because well, Jesus I won, will. we win. That's right. Yeah, amen. So everything that we lost, we're going to get back. Jesus is going to restore it. In fact, uh -huh. Beyond, which is already restored in your spirit. Amen. Uh -huh. You already got everlasting life. Yes, you can. Uh -huh. Amen. And everything that Adam lost in, in the fall is exactly what people lack today without Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is exactly Amen. what they lacked without Amen. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this yeah. is a picture Amen. of the position of sinful man today because of what Adam and Eve, when they went against God and went the other direction, they put man right where he is today, and man Amen. is still there. Let me tell you something. Amen. God ain't Amen. mad at what you... Listen, God has got an issue with what happened in the garden. That's right. Yeah. Amen. You sin because you're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But since God has cleansed you, oh Lord, I wish I had a witness this morning. Listen, because God has cleansed us, He has made us right, the righteousness of God in Christ. Now I am the sons of God, like He was just talking about. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. He said Satan came before the sons of God. Who do you think the sons of God? Listen. Before you ever came into a flesh body, you were a spiritual being. Right. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. And God put every spiritual being in a flesh body. Amen. Right. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So you would be able to choose whether you're going to serve God or man. Amen. Uh -huh. God or yeah. Satan. Which way you're going to yes. go. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. So God allowed you to be wrapped in flesh, put on this earth through a woman's womb. Yes. Yeah. So Amen. you can be a free moral being, so he never had to worry about nobody coming up to heaven saying I didn't want to be here. Listen, you Amen. made a choice on earth. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And then Pastor Hawk talked about in Revelation how Satan gets thrown out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And to be honest Amen. with you, to be honest with you, he was here when you got here. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He was already in the garden. Some of y'all don't really want the truth. He was already in the garden. And let me tell you something that's going to mess you up. I don't know if you missed it or not, but I got to hurry up and get off of this, so this is something for another day. Pastor Hart told you that he was cursed to be on his yeah. stomach. Now, that was the key Amen. thing, and I know uh -huh. it went right over something. Oh, right. Amen. Amen. You missed it. Oh, I know you missed it. But some of y'all that know some deeper teaching, you didn't miss that. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. Now, some of you don't know a deeper teaching. You didn't. Listen, he said that Satan was cursed. The devil, Amen. the snake, the serpent was cursed to be on his stomach. So what mm -hmm. does that mean? He wasn't mm -hmm. on his stomach when Adam and Eve came up to him. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to have to leave alone because I don't want you to go have to pop again cobra to keep up with this spiritual deep. So I'm going to drop it right there for now. But I'm going right. to say to you this. That man's sinful state mirrors Adam and Eve fall in the garden. That's where they at. That's where they at today. 
They're alienated from God. If you don't know God, you're not saved. They're alienated from God. They're ignorant of God's truth. Come on here, somebody. Amen. Amen. Physical and spiritual Amen. Death. Amen. But none of you are. Not one of you is condemned to that Amen. because you've been born Hallelujah. again. Amen. Amen. You better give God some praise right there. Amen. That's Amen. 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 Oh, not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. No, not me. 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 No, sir. That was a lie. I'm saying, say goodbye, and on my way to heaven, and all of y'all, all of us going together. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn this thing over to Minister Chesley to go ahead and open up this thing. You know, I love you, Pastor Hart. You're such a good teacher, man. I Amen. really, really, Amen. really, really, really enjoy it, man. Amen. You know, Amen. Amen. Amen.